Now this. Not this. The new washable plastic bandage Curad invites you to enjoy the absolutely unrehearsed animal, vegetable, or mineral game, 20 Questions. And here is your man about questions, Jay Jackson. Hello there. Here we are in a brand new set tonight, and very fancy it is, too. 20 Questions time again, where you listeners send in subjects for our experts to identify in not more than 20 questions. Now, you can keep track of how many questions have been asked on our Curide scoreboard, which has 20 letters. For each question asked, one letter lights up. And now, let's meet our panel of experts tonight, who are first Fred Van Deventer, famous news analyst. Good evening, Jade. Did you enjoy your trip to Greencastle? I enjoyed the trip out. The trip back was somewhat more difficult, with an eight-hour ground over in Pittsburgh. <laughs> our next panel member, Florence Renard, talented musician. Hello, Jay. Hello, Florence. Herb Palazzi, radio and television producer. Glad to see you again, Jay. I'm glad you got back. I've seen too much of you in the last few days, Palazzi. <laughs> Dick Harrison, our young student. Good evening, Mr. Jackson. That's my boy. Great. And our special guest tonight, a distinguished gentleman from the field of education, the president of DePaul University at Greencastle, Indiana, Dr. Russell J. Humbert. Well, Dr. Humbert, if we can treat you half as graciously as you treated us out in Greencastle, uh, I'm sure you'll be well taken care of. But you're already familiar with the show, so I suppose we can get right to it, huh? It's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. It's nice to have you, sir. And now, before we give our experts a crack at the first subject, here is a word from Don Hancock. Thank you, Jay. Well, I have some interesting facts for you folks about that great new plastic bandage, Curad. Suppose we start out by looking at a scene that's familiar to all of us. Careful, little girl. Oh, that's too bad. But don't worry. Mother will fix it. And what you need on that knee is an easy-to-apply plastic bandage. Not just any bandage, but the new plastic bandage, Curad. It's the big name in first aid. Curad stays on, fits like your own skin, moves like your skin, and stays clean, stays neat. It's washable, waterproof plastic that stays on in water, looks like this. Not messy and soggy like this old-style cloth bandage. Curad, the plastic bandage with the exclusive medication that fights germs doesn't just cover them, and this medication does not stain hands or clothes. Curad, now in flesh color as well as white. Get Curad plastic bandages today. Ask for the new plastic bandage Curad in the green and white can. Now for our first subject tonight, submitted by George W. Nockreiner of Spring Green, Wisconsin. We're sending Mr. Nockreiner, as we will to the sender of each uh, subject used on the program, America's Most Comprehensive World Atlas, a treasure for your home library, the new, enlarged, and completely revised edition of the Rand McNally Cosmopolitan Atlas. All right, panel, let's see what we can do with Mr. Nockreiner's first subject tonight. In 20 questions, see if you can get it, it's animal. Tonight's first subject, the distinguished American architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. They know at home. Suppose we start with, uh, oh, Herb Palazzi. Did Mr. Rockniner, Rockheimer, is that his name? He's going to hate you. It's Nockreiner. Nockreiner. Well, did he think <laughs> of a whole animal? Yes, he did. He has a whole animal in mind. Van Deventer. A human being? Yes. Dick? Is he living? Yes. You mean Don't be so or the subject? Don't be so hesitant. <laughs> subject is living. Florence. American? Yes. It's starting out easy. It's going to get mm. tougher, I think. Van Deventer. Is it a man? It is a man. Living American man. You see, one mm. question in the old days would have done all that, Van. Dr. Humbert. Is he in the field of politics or statesmanship? Uh, believe not as, uh, no, I won't go any further than that. He's not, not known for that at all. Florence. Is he an entertainment of any kind? Nope. Don't think we'd call his field entertainment. That's seven. Thirteen left. Van? Is he connected with the arts or sciences? Yes. Dick. Is he a writer? Not a writer, uh, yes. I should say he is a writer, not best known as a writer. Florence. Is he connected with education at all? Has been, uh, among other things. Her. Well, is he a doctor? Possibly, uh, he's not referred to that way, Herb. I couldn't be quite sure. We don't know him as Dr. So-and-so, I'll say that. Van. Has he been the uh, head of an educational institution? Yes, but again, that would be misleading, I think, if you took me up on it. Uh, Van. Well, I've just got an idea because this is a sort of a DePaul night with all these DePaul alumni out here. This uh, man wouldn't also be in the field of religion, would he? 
No, and of whom are you thinking? Bishop Oxnum. Oh, yes, of course. No, not Bishop Oxnum. Not in the field of religion. Dick. Is he a scientist? Uh, his claim to fame is somewhat scientific, yes, although not exclusively. Uh, Florence. Does he live east of the Mississippi? His, no, he may be there now. His, uh, that's not his home, however. You mean he'll oh, be there on a pass. You mean he doesn't make that his headquarters now? No, he does not. Florence. Has he ever been in the government? That is, is he, uh, is this a position which he used to have, which he has no longer? Didn't say anything about a position. He has never been in the government, no, to my knowledge. Not in any important uh, way. Then. Does he live west of the Rockies? Well, he does. Uh, is that his headquarters? Uh, yes. Hesitantly, he said. Yes. <laughs> I believe he does live west of the Rockies. He lives west. Hmm. That's 17, three left. He's going to be a tough to get him out of there. <laughs> this is difficult because the man's uh, field is a little tough to pinpoint, although it's uh, quite well known. He's not obscure at all. Well, well. All right, Herb. <laughs> Does he work with a pen at all, mainly? Yes, works with a pen. Eighteen. Then, <laughs> well, uh, uh, I think we've got to locate him a little bit farther. It, it seems na natural to locate him anyway. You've only got two left, I think. I, I should understand tell you. that. Okay. Is he primarily from California? No. That leaves only one left, and now you must get him. You'll have to review some of the questions you've asked, uh, to all of which I gave kind of qualified answers, because his field overlaps many others. Seems to be quite a fellow. He is quite a fellow. As you will know in just a minute, warm up the grand prize. Gary, anybody have an idea at all? I don't. All right, let's send to Mr. George W. Nockreiner, and if I told you... Uh, uh, Mr. Nockreiner's home state might uh, have helped uh, you. Got it, Van? Uh, Too late, of course, but try. Wisconsin. No, it isn't. You, well, you said he was from Wisconsin. Yeah. No, he I doesn't don't. make the great cheese weeds. Does that help any? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. All right, let's send Mr. Nockreiner... Uh, A knockwashed. The uh, grand... <laughs> Send him the grand prize. That's the book that everybody wants, the new thumb-indexed Columbia Encyclopedia. It contains six million words covering seven billion years of history and progress. We'll also send a supply of Curad waterproof plastic bandages for such important places in the home as the medicine chest, the kitchen, the garage, or the workshop. He stumped you with a man who was born in Wisconsin, now makes his home, I believe, out in Arizona, the famous American architect Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, I even know the name of his home. Taliesin, isn't Taliesin. it? Taliesin. Taliesin, yes. Very beautiful place. And he has been an educator, has his own little school out there, and uh, in the arts, sciences, almost everything. So yeah. it makes him pretty hard to pinpoint, I think. Let's try one now from Grace Moore Walker of Dallas, Texas. This subject... This subject was the property of a turn-of-the-century reformer. It's Carrie Nation's Hatchet. The home audience knows it. Who'd like to start us? Dick Harrison. Can this be located geographically? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm afraid it can't, Dick. Florence. Is it fictional? No, real subject. Herbert. Is it manufactured at all? Yes. That's good in three. Florence. Class subject? Not a class subject. Four U's, 16 left band. Does it exist? Don't believe it does. It's not, uh, not terribly important. Dick. Was it connected with a person? Yes. Good in six, 14 left. Florence. Uh, was he in the government? I beg your pardon? <laughs> I'm alert tonight, Florence. You don't get those two-for-onesies. Would you like to try it again? Uh, you mean Ask you refuse to answer that? Uh, no, I'll answer it. The answer is no. I might tell you that's a wasted question, however. Yeah. I man. think you're right, Jay. <laughs> is this person a man? No. Now, you see, I got two that way. Yeah. Two for one. That's two eight and twelve left. Coat. person is not a man. Florence. Uh, was she in entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> No. Then. <laughs> I don't know why all this. Uh, uh, is this woman living? She is not. That's uh, halfway <laughs> through now. Ten used and ten left. Dick Harrison. Was she known? Uh, oh, did she go around and make a sort of a nuisance of herself? <laughs> well, uh, that depends on which side of the argument you were on, Dick. Uh, let's say she was a uh, provocateuse, I suppose that would be the word. Go ahead, Dick. The woman wouldn't be Carrie Nation. Yes. Right? Her axe. Her axe. Her hatchet. Very good. <laughs> Dick, I'm beginning to get a little suspicious of that 
14 years, you claim. You seem to know more things that happened around the turn of the century, <laughs> and especially in the cause that Kerry Nation was enjoined. I've, I've got to check your book. Well, he was a smart book. glint, too. Um. <laughs> he sure was. Let's try one from Mrs. Viola Revej now. We'll send Mrs. Revej the Rand McNally Cosmopolitan Atlas. She lives in Irwin, Pennsylvania, by the way. This subject is animal and vegetable. And it's a piece of gymnasium equipment. This one is a punching bag. The mystery voice has told the people at home who'd like to start us off. Do you have an idea, Doctor? Can this be located geographically? No, it cannot. Not important its geographic location, Florence. Is this fictional? No, real subject in two. Dick? Is this edible? No. <laughs> Not in our set, Richard, no. Van de Venter? Is it clothing of any sort? Not of any sort. That's four. Florence? Does this exist? Oh, yes. Five, one-fourth of the way through. Herb Palazzi. Is this the kind of a thing my mother-in-law might use? As well as the I imagine there are times, Herbert, when you wish she had. Yes. Uh, when I wish she had. I, I don't think that's much help to you, however, Van. Head, I want you. Is the animal part leather? Yes, that's good, in seven. Van again. And is the vegetable part cloth? No. Thought he had something there for a minute. Who else has an idea now? Florence? Is this connected at all with a person? Not with a particular person, no. Herb. With any sport? Yes, in ten, halfway through. Can you sit on it? I'd like to add that. Pardon? Can one sit on it? No one charged for that. You wouldn't sit on it. I'll get out of this here saddle. <laughs> Van. Is the vegetable part wooden? Nope. Neither cloth nor wood. Isn't that surprising? It certainly is. <laughs> Florence. Is it connected with the sport played with the ball? No. That's 13. Seven left. Dick Harrison. Would the vegetable part be rubber? It would be, Dick. Ah, we know the makeup of this subject. Fourteen, six left. Van? Not played with a ball. No, no. You, I don't know why you're so suspicious of my answers. I've got uh, the thing right here on the card. You see, I can still read. Yeah. Van again. Is this a team sport? No, it's not. That's uh, fifteen. Five left. Florence? Do two people compete in this sport at the same time? I mean, is it a, a game of two people? Well, two people compete in the sport, yes. Together? Yes. Well, is it boxing or wrestling? Yes. Wait, we're boxing? running out. That's 17-3 left. Oh, well. Boxing? Yes, Florence. Boxing gloves? No. Oh, one left to get it now. Uh, one left to get it. Vegetables? And leather. Subject connected with boxing. Mm -hmm. Made of, uh, I don't know why I should remind you. You well, should you remember. said leather and rubber. We've That's already got that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Think of anything in boxing made of leather and rubber? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay, Van, what is it? A punching bag. That's it. Very good. <laughs> I see. Well, I've been that, too. I <laughs> <laughs> wonder if your mother-in-law has used... Maybe she trains with one of them, huh? How do you think I got these corn flower ears, Jay? <laughs> Let's see. We haven't been able to stump the panel so far tonight, uh, did we? It's the first one, of course. Frank Lloyd Wright. What a shame. All right, we'll be playing 20 questions again in just a few seconds. Right now, here again is Don Hancock. Say, do you know what folks like best about the new plastic bandage cure ad? Well, it's this. You can wash with it on. That's right, it's waterproof. Even in hot, soapy dishwater, a cure ad stays stuck. Now, some of you folks may wonder why a cure ad stays on even in water. Actually, there are two very good reasons. One, this waterproof plastic backing that just won't let the water get through into the adhesive. And over here on the other side, the Curad folks use a special kind of adhesive that, believe me, it really sticks. I'd like to show you this. Here is a very fine, expensive, beautiful piece of china. Now watch this. Gentle touch. How's that for sticking, huh? As a matter of fact, in laboratory tests, folks, the Curad has supported 4,560 times its own weight. Now that's the story of why a Curad stays on until you take it off. And believe me, when you do, you're not going to find any gummy mess underneath either. So the next time you buy bandages, I just want you to remember this. Insist now on the new plastic bandage Curad, another Curity product by Bauer and Black. Dr. Russell Humbert, president of DePaul University, we learned a little about your uh, fine institution out there Saturday night, but of course on television we have a completely different audience, so I wonder if you would tell us some of the highlights of DePaul's long history and uh, where your people come from, how long you've been in business, and a few things like that. Jay, it is a distinct pleasure to be here tonight on this panel. I can't say that I enjoy the panel nearly as much as I do the company. <laughs> We've been in business 17, uh, about 117 years, and we have a coeducational school 
that has very high academic standing, as evidenced by the kind of people that we have here in the studio audience tonight, men and women who are leaders in business and the great professions. We have pretty girls, as I think you saw the other sure day. Did. Oh, wow. yes, yes, and yes. I knew we'd get a reaction on that, and we have some stalwart men on our campus, too. Yes, indeed. I like this. 1,740 of them all together, and uh, we enjoy the great wide open spaces of the Midwest at Greencastle, Indiana. Well, it's a beautiful and very fine school, and if... Uh, if your academic stature is as high as your standards of hospitality, uh, everyone should rate a Ph.D. out of there. You uh, really and he, the it. good doctor, didn't tell you the food is very good at the fluttering duck. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I knew about that, did you? Well, I was in Greencastle. Out really the Handy's farm, too, I want you to know. Herb really got around when he was yeah. out there, I guess. All right, let's go on with the game now, and a subject which comes to us from Sarah C. Heffron of Trenton, New Jersey. We'll send Miss Heffron the Rand McNally Cosmopolitan Atlas. See what the panel can do with this one. Subject's animal. This is the 20 Questions Mystery Voice again. Now the subject is a lady who created a great advice to the lovelorn column, the late Dorothy Dix. Animal subject, let them see in the studio, and who'd like to start us off this time? Uh, all right, uh, Florence Bernard, you're the prettiest animal on the panel. Go ahead. <laughs> is it human? Subject is human. May a good-looking vegetable say something here? Go ahead, vegetable. <laughs> is it a whole human? Yes. Oh, well, thank you. An entire one. Dr. Humbert. Alive and current? Not alive or current. <laughs> Van. Mm -hmm. Is it a man? Not a man. Let's see. Oh. Before we know that much. Dick Harrison? Fictional? No. Real. Van. Was she an American? She was. That's six and 14 left. Florence. Was she in any of the, uh, any form of entertainment? I'll ask that. Don't, I don't think her pursuit is primarily concerned with entertainment, no. Van. Was she more famous because of some relative than in her own right? Well, I don't know all her relatives, but I don't think any of them were very famous. No, she was quite famous in her own right. Her? Did they write a book about her, and was she the title of it? I better consult my literary authority here. Yeah, I've got uh, plenty of books here. Lots of books oh. over there. I don't think so, her. I think there was a book about her, but I don't think it. Uh, don't think her name was the title. Uh, might have been. Actually, it's not terribly important. Florence. Was she a very early American? How early? Well, in the 1600s. No, no. I could. You mean she wore shoes? <laughs> was she? Uh, was she uh, important in the history of the United States? Well. To some people, she was quite important, but she's not uh, what we generally consider an historic figure. I think. Uh, Dr. Humbert. She noted in the field of medicine or science? No, I know where you're leading. The answer is no. Florence. Is she noted in uh, the field of fashions or anything of that type? Don't believe so. Not at all. Van? Did she live prior to the Civil War? She... Wait a minute. Uh, no. No, she did not. That's 14. She came after the Civil War. She came after the Civil War. Hmm. 14 and 6 left. It's a tough one. Came not after in the entertainment. Civil. Apparently so. I said no. I didn't say in entertainment. No. She's not in entertainment. No. That was asked. I said no. Uh, I've been corrected on one thing. There was a book written about her with her uh, name in the title. I thought you were giving me a bad <laughs> no. Sorry, Herbert, but I don't think that's too much help. The book certainly was not uh, a big bestseller by any means. Florence. Well, I may have read it. Did she operate east of the Mississippi, or did she do whatever she did east of the Mississippi? Mm, yes. Wouldn't be Calamity Jane. Would not be. That's 16 and only four left to get this lady. <laughs> Dick, if you know this one, I'm going to scream. Go ahead. Was she an agitator, sort of like Carrie Nation? <laughs> <laughs> what other agitators are there? No, I, I suppose some of her opinions may have been controversial, but she was not uh, an agitator or provocateur, if I coined a word. Uh, Florence. Did she have anything at all to do with woman suffrage or temperance? Woman suffrage or suffering, did you say? <laughs> Well, I said suffrage. Should I ask the other one? No. Uh, I'm not going to help you. Nothing to do with women's suffrage or temperance uh, that I know of. Her. Hmm. I was thinking of the other thing. Wait a minute. Only two left. I'm going to crack this one. Is it Virginia Dare? Not Virginia Dare. She was Dare. 1600. She was, oh, yes. She was very early, wasn't mm -hmm. she? Yeah. Oh. Very early. Um, I, got to, I must have got a bad bottle. <laughs> well, I think we'll have to charge for it, though, since you weren't paying attention, boy. Florence. You said nothing to do with fashion. Not that I know of, certainly not importantly to do with fashion. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Now you must get her. Yes, Only I one know. Left. After the Civil After War. After the Civil War. 
and before 1900. I didn't say that either. Oh, didn't you? Well, not... Uh, if I did, I said not exclusively before 1900. She, li she did live before 1900, that's true. Hmm. I'm giving too much help, and still not enough. Well, it'd be Anybody pretty hard to figure out of a 14 million now, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's getting a little tough. All right, let's, late, let's send uh, Miss Sarah C. Heffron, uh, no ideas? Of Trenton, New Jersey, the new Columbia Encyclopedia, which belongs in everybody's home. In its 2,000 pages, you'll find the subjects discussed on 20 questions, including this one. Nice chapter on this young lady in, uh, in the Columbia Encyclopedia. We'll also send her a supply of Curad waterproof plastic bandages for such important places in the home as the medicine cabinet, the kitchen, the garage, and the workshop. She stumped you with advice to the lovelorn Dorothy Dix. Dorothy Dix. And I think a guest of ours just a couple of weeks ago did write a book about her. Harnett Kane, I think, wrote something, but it wasn't... Uh, I don't think you'd know her by that. All right, I think we have time for another one from Mrs. Gerald Green of Cincinnati, Ohio. See what you can do with this as we send the Rand McNally Cosmopolitan Atlas for a subject which is vegetable. The tents in this subject have figured importantly in the news of late. The subject is the tents where the repatriation talks with prisoners of war are being held. The interrogation tents at Pan Munjom. A very difficult vegetable, too, I think I should tell you. Uh, let's start with Dick Harrison. Is this wood or a wood product? No, not wood or a wood product. Florence? Is it edible? Nope. Van? Is it manufactured? Yes. Subject is manufactured. Dick? Does it exist? Yes. Uh, Florence? Class subject? No. This is uh, quite specific. Van? Is its base either cotton or rubber? Uh, might be one or the other. Could be something else, too. Dr. Humbert? Normally small enough that I could hold it in my hand. Uh, I think you'd have a little trouble holding this in your hand, Doctor. It's not that small. Herbert? Is it associated with one person, Jim? No, not with one particular person. Let's see. That's eight reviews and 12 left. Florence? Is it associated at all with transportation? Mm, no, nope, don't think so. Van? Did you say that it does exist? It does exist. Don't charge. Van again. Is this... Uh, is this a flat surface? That is, it is such as a large piece of cloth? Oh, you make it pretty tough. Um, it's not in its present form flat. Now, that's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, if you'd asked the question a little differently, I could have given it a different <laughs> answer. That's ten and ten left. All right, Van. Can we locate this thing? Yes. Go on. In the United States? No. That's a little twelve. Eight left, Florence. In Europe? Not in Europe. Herbert? In Asia? In Asia. Subjects in Asia. Van. Is, uh, is this in Korea? It is. Fifteen you've used. Five left. Van, you're, I think you're on the track now. What? The, uh, the tent where they have the, uh, uh, at Panmunjom, where they had the peace meetings? That'll do. The interrogation tent. <laughs> Those are the tents. All right, we have a uh, very exciting surprise for you all in just about one minute. But first, here is an important message. Hot to on me, hot to hot, pull down on that rifle butt. If you want to pass the town, watch that arm swing, cover down. Square those shoulders, show some pep, dress is right, hey, get in step. Heads up, men, now halt in place, wipe that smile off of your face. Get off your feet, men, take a break, smoke if you got them, but stay awake. You have to stay awake in our modern army. Soldiers must be expert in such fields as radar, electronics, engineering, photography. Soldiering is a tough, hard job. But it's an exciting, intensely rewarding job, too. With a three-year enlistment, you'll get good training and experience. And be prepared to get ahead, either in the army or in civilian life. See your nearest army recruiter and talk it over. Well, I promised you something special, and here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight you're about to witness a memorable occasion, a milestone in the history of 20 questions, and for that matter, we believe in the history of television. In our studio audience tonight, we have with us a group of alumni from DePaul University, whence our guest comes, at Greencastle, Indiana. And you're about to see the conferring of an honorary degree on one of our panel members, 
by Dr. Russell Humbert, our guest tonight, the president of DePaul University. Assisting him in this special convocation will be Dean Farber, Dean Robert Holton Farber, Dean of the University, and Mr. Howard C. Shepard, chairman of the board of the National City Bank of New York and president of the board of trustees of the university. Right now, I should like you to meet Dean Farber. Mr. President, it is an honor to present to you Florence Renard Van Devanter for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. A native of farmland, Indiana, she entered the School of Music at DePauw University, where she made a distinguished record, and later served as a music supervisor in the schools of the state of Indiana. In 1945, Florence Renard participated in the development of the 20 Questions program, and she has been an outstanding member of the panel since its original broadcast in 1946. 20 Questions has been recommended for all levels of education in the public schools of the United States and in private schools and colleges by the radio department of the United States Office of Education. It was chosen by the Voice of America as one of the outstanding shows for use in penetrating the Iron Curtain, and it has been carried for several years by the Armed Forces Network. Throughout her career as a distinguished pianist and a star of this radio and television panel, Florence Renard has maintained the highest level in entertainment and education. She is admired everywhere, and her work has brought honor to this nation and to DePaul University. Florence Renard Van Deventer, recognized pioneer and leader in the realm of radio and television, native Hoosier, practical educator, distinguished daughter of DePaul University, upon the recommendation of the faculty, the trustees have authorized me to confer upon you, Florence Renard Van Deventer, the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. As a symbol thereof, I invest you with this hood and hand you herewith the diploma, bearing the great seal of the corporation and the signatures of the proper offices. May I congratulate you, Florence Renard Van Deventer. Congratulations, Florence, and now we'll hear the toast of DePaul University sung by the New York chapter of the DePaul Alumni Association. Once again, our heartiest congratulations and thanks to you, Dean uh, Farber and President Humbert, for joining us tonight. And we're all basking in Florence's reflected glory. We're all very proud, and I know Florence will wear this degree with pride and uh, do it justice and honor always. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you, and good night. Thank you again, Dr. Humbert. Certainly a distinct pleasure. This is the Dumont Television Network.